Hi, I'm Father Joel, and welcome to Pilgrim Priest. I'm grateful to Exodus 90 and to the brothers in my fraternity. We've already been walking for 45 days or so, and as we continue this journey with you, I look forward to Easter and that great feast. I hope today brings you closer to the Easter celebration. God bless. Happy Lent, everybody. Happy Ash Wednesday. Happy Valentine's Day. I guess it's a day for a cheap date. You can go out to, and not eat. Yesterday I had to, uh, got all my Valentine's candy. I decided to eat it all instead of saving it because Lent was starting. It was a good day. And a lot of, you know, be my Valentine, a lot of those messages. Anyone can say, I love you, right? Try it. Go ahead, say it. I love you, right? Doesn't cost us anything. How do we know it's really true? How do we know that somebody really loves us and they're not just saying those words? Any ideas? Yeah? You have some time to figure it out. No idea? What do you guys think? How do we know somebody really loves us and they're not just saying it? Blowing kisses? Blowing Well, that was easy too, yeah? Giving them like a hug? Okay, so we're looking not just for words, but deeds, right? Actions. Flowers, chocolates, hugs. Those are good things, but anybody could do those things, couldn't they? How do we know someone really loves us? And they're not just saying it or not just putting on a good show. How do you know it's really love? No idea? What do you think? Kissing? You and your mom and your dad do kisses? And your sister? Well, sounds like a very loving family, which is wonderful. But if you really love somebody, you have to want what's best for that person. You have to, if I love someone, then what that means is that I want what's best for you and not just for me. So part of that is respect, right? If somebody says, I love you, but they're not very nice to us, do you think they really love us? No, No, right? So that's one way we can tell if people are respectful of us. But oftentimes when people say, I love you, what they mean is, you look pretty. You, You make me feel good. When I'm around you, I get butterflies in my stomach and I have a hard time talking. You make me feel a certain way, and I like that. And that's okay for starters, but that's not real love. Real love is when someone cares about us, when they want what's best for us. And in fact, true love is when someone so wants what's best for us that they're willing to put us first, that they're willing to lay down their life for you. True love is not being afraid to sacrifice yourself for the person that you love. Think of the way your mommies and daddies go out of their way to do things for you. They sacrifice themselves so that you can have what you need. That's what true love is all about. True love is not only willing what's good for the other, but even being willing to put the other person first. And that's how we know that Jesus truly loves us. The Bible isn't full of a whole bunch. I mean, the Bible says that God loves us, but it's not full of a whole bunch of hugs and kisses and flowers and chocolates. Why? Because God knows that deeds mean more than words. And so he shows us his love by dying on the cross for us. We know that Jesus is true love because he sacrifices himself for us. If you love someone, you will be willing to sacrifice for them. 
That sounds pretty hard, huh? Is there anyone you'd lay down your life for? But it's crazy romantic, isn't it? I love you so much, I want to spend the rest of my life putting you first. Wow. I'm willing to die for you. Okay. That's true love. Well, Jesus sacrificed himself for us, and that's why Lent is all about sacrifice. Because if we truly love Jesus, then we'll not only say, I love you, but we need to show it with our deeds. And not just nice things, but being willing to sacrifice for Jesus. That's why we give up something for Lent. But in fact, there's not just one thing we do for Lent, there's three different things we do for Lent. Was anybody paying attention in our gospel reading? Jesus said, when you... He gave us three things that we were supposed to do. Do Did you remember any of them? We'll call them the rest of the kids here. Yes. Um, Fasting, praying, and giving alms. Fasting, praying, and giving alms. Very good. When you fast, when you fast, when you go without food, when you, that's a sacrifice, right? You should do so for love of God. Many of us will give up something for Lent. It might be soda, it might be TV, it might be your Xbox. When you give something up that's good, that's a sacrifice, that's fasting. And what you're saying is, I love God more than soda or TV or my Xbox. That's a sacrifice. And that's important, but there's two more things you should do for Lent. The second one is prayer. We should make time every day for prayer. In fact, a little more time during Lent than we do in our everyday life. So we should all be praying every day, but during Lent we should pray a little more. Why? Because that helps us connect with the God who loves us. Any relationship requires communication, right? So our relationship with God would be the same. If you're not communicating with God, you're not going to have much of a relationship. And finally, almsgiving. Does anybody know what almsgiving is? No. Nope. If I had an alm, I'd be happy to give it. Almsgiving is an old-fashioned word for charity, for giving to the poor, for helping the poor. So alms is money that's given to serve the poor. So any kind of generosity is what almsgiving is all about. We have rice bowls in church that can help you give to Catholic Relief Services, to some of the needy people around the world. And we have little black books in church, which can help you with prayer. So if you plan to give up something for Lent, take a little black book with you, take a rice bowl with you, and now you've got prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, all good to go. Fasting disconnects us from the pleasures of this world, from trying to satisfy myself. Prayer connects me more with God, the God who loves me and who is the source of true love. And almsgiving allows me to reach out in generosity and be more loving. So I'm a little less selfish, a little more connected to true love, and a little more generous, a little more of an image of God's love. Do you see how great Lent is? Lent is a huge opportunity for us to not just say I love you, but to really show it by our actions. Because anyone can say I love you, but it's only really love if you want what's best for the other, and it's only true love if you're willing to sacrifice. Jesus sacrifices for us. What are you willing to do for him? So there's a gentleman that was uh, called on to paint a local church out in the countryside. And he was painting, and he was almost finished, and, uh, but he was running out of paint. So he looked around, he decided no one's watching. He put a bunch of paint thinner in the paint, thinned it out, and lo and behold, it just made it to the top of the steeple. Well, he's feeling rather smug, and he's cleaning up his stuff, and suddenly a little storm cloud comes over the church, and it starts to rain and all the paint begins to wash off the steeple. 
and he hears a voice from heaven. Repaint thinner. <laughs> Repaint and thin no more.